On this hunt, I'm in New Zealand chasing wild boar with a professional pig hunter and two tiny dogs. He's only a little fella. See if we can get a bigger one than that. No gun, no bow. Nothing but two hands and a knife. This is as close range as you can get. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance and survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. I'm on New Zealand's South Island right now, and I'm driving in the early morning darkness out to hook up with a guy who's a professional pig culler. He's like a pig bounty hunter. And when he goes out in these hills, this guy goes out with two little dinky dogs and a knife. And once those dogs get that pig fought down to the ground, he jumps in and makes the kill. It's up close, it's personal, it's very visceral, and it's the one kind of hunting that actually makes me a little uneasy because you're in there breathing the breath of the animal that you're going to kill and eat that night. New Zealand's South Island has incredibly varied ecosystems. You've got Rocky Mountain peaks, glaciated basins, rolling grass foothills, and dense coastal forests, which is where we're going to be hunting today. I'm meeting with Darren Moore, a professional pig hunter and dog trainer who works year-round controlling wild pig populations. Appreciate you coming out. You got a pig dog in the back there? Yeah, I'll tell you. You're kidding me. Yeah, they go. That'll do it. And they'll catch them. They got fired the other day when me and Remy went out. <laughs> You're kidding me, man. So what's the basic plan? How are we gonna how, how are we gonna do this? We're just gonna go for a walk down a track up on top here and just let the dogs have a look around and see if they can catch us a pig. Alright, uh, this is cool. God, this is beautiful. How long have you been hunting pigs for? Like your whole life or what? Yeah, most of it since teenager. How many days a year might you hunt pigs? Um, probably four days a week. Oh, so you're full on balls out pig hunting. Yeah. yeah. Are there a lot of guys in New Zealand that are in the business you're in? A lot of people hunt pigs. But not not for like not no. professionally. No. But people will hunt them recreationally. Yeah. Pigs probably get hunted more in New Zealand than any other game animal. Oh really? Yeah. An invasive species with no natural predators. Wild boars have been part of the New Zealand landscape since the mid-18th century, when Captain James Cook brought them from Europe on a voyage to the South Pacific. They've since come to be known as Cook's pigs, and they are considered to be a nuisance across much of New Zealand. In order to keep the surrounding farmers happy, timber companies call hunters like Darren in to cull the pig populations that emanate from their forests. Darren takes me to a spot where pigs like to hang out, and we cut the dogs loose. Oh, so they're not that small. Come here. But like a delicate legged dog, though. Huh? Fast, because they've got whippet in them to make them run fast because their pigs run so fast. I used to just have pit bull, mm -hmm. but our pigs are running so fast, I had to speed my dogs up, so I put whippet in them. The two dogs, Spy and Winnie, are fitted with GPS collars so they can set out on their own to find pigs hiding in the brush. Get in here. Don't go that way. That goes like that? Yep. Once they're on one, Darren and I will catch up with them and finish the job. Until then, it's pretty much a stroll through the woods. Watching for evidence of pigs. That's pigs there, right? Yeah, that's what those dogs have just smelled. Yeah. Yes, he's only a little pig. That's his mark there. He's only a bear. That's yeah, bad. yeah. And taking in the scenery. Shh, that's a deer, oh, deer. deer. But mostly, it's a waiting game. 
keeping an eye on the GPS tracker and interpreting the dog's movements. It's clearly a skill that comes from years of experience. It's made us pig hunters lazy, this. As if. We just have to run around after our dogs. Yeah, yeah, no, just, just hang out. Hang out and wait. They start making some ruckus when they get on one. They will on a big one. Oh, they, they get more excited on a big one? Yeah, they don't trail bark like your hound dogs. They, they're quiet until they catch it. Uh-huh. Also, they, they practice like a stealthy. Yeah, they're stealthy. <laughs> so how do you know where the hell they're at if you don't have GPS? You don't. Oh, really? <laughs> so that technology has really helped out with Yeah, when, before I had GPS, I used to run them with a, run them with a dog that barked. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can find things? Yeah. That's a pig there. That's a sow. She's about a, probably about a 70-pound sow. Now, how can you tell a sow track from a boar? It's uh, pointier. Sow is pointier? Yeah, because a boar does a lot more walking around looking for females, and his toes get real blunt. They're real round on the end. So that right there feels like a pointy track. Yep, that's a sow for sure. Now, how big is she? How many pounds? Probably about 70, 80 pounds. OK. Yeah. So that's a sizable pig. Then. That's a, that'd be a good pig to catch to eat. Yeah. Let's go, doggies. Yes, boy. Come here, girl. Where you go? Here. Right, straight in there and up. Yeah, you got her. Just watch that head, mate, because she will bite. Good stick. Good stick. That was probably one of the better sticks I've seen a person do for the first time. Killed it just about straight away. That's a pretty good size sow for New Zealand. Good girl. Good girl. Hey? Good girl. Rightio, we'll drag it out up to here and take the guts out of her. So you do one of those an hour sometimes? Sometimes I do. In good heavy pig country I do. <laughs> You get bit much? Oh, I've been bitten a couple of times. Yeah, they bite hard too. Oh, yeah, man. I've heard of people getting their calf muscle bitten off. Uh -huh. If it grabs hold of you, it's not going to let go in a hurry. When you've got the tail or the leg, you're at the right end because you can move around. Yeah, you got the good end. Yeah, you don't want to get in the front end. You don't grab them by the snout very often. I grab them by the ear if I have to. How old do you think that pig is? She's, uh, she's probably about five. She's probably not going to be the best pork to eat, but she'll be all right in mint stuff. Or make some burger or something out of it, sausage. Job well done. What are you after? That heart. Ah, look at that. Did you get it? Yep, perfect. See that? Dead nuts, man. Hey, could be knife. Got it right where you wanted. I'll show you how we tie your legs. You're doing this to get it ready for transport? Yep. And just put a neck there as well. And just put that over there like that. Just put those through the grooves. 
Oh, so you're just making like a little place for that to land. Yep, well, it slips out and then, yeah. especially getting through all this heavier cover, it's nothing worse than the legs coming untied all the time. And you just got a little backpack to pack them out. Nice, man. It's a nice little package. And it's a wee package ready to go. Put an arm through that one, an arm through that one. There you go. One pig ready to go out. It's not bad. That's all right, isn't it? That's, That's a good way to go on. Give him a wee kiss if you fancy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> With the sow strapped to my back, we climb back up the mountain to the main trail. No sooner do we get to the top than Darren becomes concerned that the dogs are not showing up on the GPS. Yeah, we might have to keep going and look for my dogs because they're out of range. OK. Now we have to go through all this horrible stuff. As we travel, their signals blink in and out. Are you coming back up yet? No, not yet, I'm not. That might be a good pig. Yes, yeah, she's running. Shh, shh, shh. Yep. Yeah. find is something that neither of us expects. Oh, it's underground. Oh, it's underground. You're kidding me. Ah, good girl. Don't do that? Yeah. We're not going to crawl in there. You can't go in there? Well, if it's a boy, he's going to rip you to bugs. Oh, really? What's he doing? He just got another hole? Yeah. Oh, I got a lamp. There you go. That's why we couldn't find our dogs. They're under the ground. He's around the corner. He's probably about here. I hear him. As we assess the situation, we start to get a picture of what exactly is going on here. The dogs have chased the pig into an underground tunnel. There's an entrance and an exit, but for whatever reason, the pig seems to be staying put. I didn't know pigs went underground. Well, OK, anyway, if you get away from dogs, then the dogs have been in there fighting them. See how dirty they are. Our initial thought is to try to dig down from above it. <laughs> How far's that dog up? It only sounds to be about here, doesn't it? So our plan now is to dig back in from that end. The whole time the dogs keep going after it, attacking the pig from behind. It's a little bit surreal. As soon as that hole gets big enough, that pig will come out because he'll be getting sick of getting his ass in. But... Watch it, dude. Now we should be able to drag him out straight up. Oh, crikey. He's jammed, isn't he? Yeah. He should come out. 
Yeah, the hell's he stuck in there? Here he goes. You got a dog there. fighting. Yeah, just grab You're his back. Just grab his back leg there. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get it. Come on, dog, let go. Watch him. Wow, what a pig hunt that turned out to be. Man, let me yeah. see you do one of those an hour. Nah. That was a hunt, man. That was a dig. Hmm. <laughs> it's about a 60-pound boar caked with mud. We did not expect to get a second pig, but this one will be even better for eating than the sow we got earlier. There. Look, Look at that. that. Perfect stack again. That's my spot, man. Well done. Well I used done. to be a heart surgeon. Yeah, I can see that. Not bad. After struggling with that pig, I can't help but admire the singular sense of purpose of these two dogs. To them, the struggling of a pig is all part of victory. For me, it's something almost haunting. But then, no one ever promised that hunting would always be clean. By nature, hunting is at turns serene and vicious. Demodify this pig right here, who's a total mess. Look at that. Oh, he's light colored. Right. That's quite a common color. For that That's a common color. Yeah. We're gonna wet him in the river, and then on a lighter fire, and then when we put the wet pig on there, it'll burn his hair, and we'll scrape it with a knife. Gotcha. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I've never seen that happen before. Darren gets the fire going in order to singe the hair off our boar. I'm gonna skin and part out this sow. Smells good. Anyone who's ever been to a pig roast knows the sight of a scalded pig, or a pig with its hide on but no hair. That's real nice. Thanks to my own lack of imagination, I never thought this was achievable for a hunter. It seemed like something for commercial processors only. But I suppose that's why us hunters like to get together to swap notes and share tricks. Not all information has to come over a Wi-Fi connection. So there you go, one scalded wild pig. And that turned out nice. Yeah, big all right to roast them up now. We don't normally eat the skin, we just uh, cock it with the skin on, and it keeps all the moisture. Oh, yeah, for sure, it. yeah. It's pretty tough on the wild pigs, it's not like domestic. All the skin is? Yeah, yeah it's I got harder you. to eat. Once Darren has all of the hair shaved off, he then shows me an ingenious way of butchering the pig that I've never seen before. So you're coming right down, so you got it right down the side of the backbone. Yep. You got the loin on there. He strips the meat away from each side, leaving the legs intact and attached. One side of pig. I like that. Basically making a side of pork minus the spine and ribs. That's beautiful. He looks a hell of a lot better than he did when he come out of that hole two dogs hanging off him. <laughs> he does. That's beautiful, That's man. Pig. That makes my day right there. So with both pigs butchered, it's time to head back to Darren's for a real New Zealand home-cooked meal. We'll go and tie these dogs up first, and I'll give them a feed. All right. And then we'll sort out our pork. Oh, you got a whole pack of hounds back here. The 
Steve. Hi, Steve. It's good to meet you. Amber. Amber, hello. How are you? Good. Might just cut that in half and roast half of them up. I won't get the rest in the roasting dish. Bit of salt on there, bit of olive oil. It's good for you. Sitting with Darren's family in a warm and comfortable home, I can't help but contrast this tranquil image against the seemingly brutal things we did earlier today. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. I'm reminded of something that the writer Barry Lopez describes as the gap between civilized man and the society of the hunter. As modern hunters, we straddle that gap. One foot in now, one foot in then. If we let the gap grow too wide, more and more of us will grow uncomfortable with our own savage history as hunters, with what it means to go out onto wild land to kill our own meat. I want to thank you, I mean, thoroughly for everything today, man. Well, it was a joy to have you.